So welcome everyone to this evening's webinar. Uh, the topic this evening is minding yourself as a coach during the season. And what a great webinar to finish off our spring coach education series. If there's anybody on the call tonight, we hope you're in, you enjoyed the previous webinars that we held. Um, and if you want to share your thoughts in the chat function, please do. But my name is William Harmon. I'm National Ladies Football Development Officer with a, a, a specific remit for coach education. And I'm joined by my colleague, uh, Garold Belfry. Garold, would you like to say hello before we start? Good evening, all. Uh, yeah, as William said, my name is Garold. I'm the Development Officer for Munster, and I'm, I'm really delighted to be on for the final of your webinar series now. And uh, in especially in relation to this topic of minding yourself as a coach, I'm really interested in t t hearing uh, what you have to say and what also the feedback in the chat from some of the other people's experiences as well that are on tonight. Excellent and good stuff. Uh, so we get cracking. We won't hold the up any further. So as I said, guys, uh, over the last number of weeks and months, we've been doing the spring uh, series in relation to coach education and all those webinars, how to develop forward play, how to counteract opposition tactics, uh, how to improve retention of the ball, and many other uh, webinars are there for you to view at your own time. So just log on to the LGFA YouTube channel and just go under the, the, the coach education playlist and you will see about 30 odd webinars there for you to view over the coming weeks. And, and this again, we always value feedback. So please, guys, if you want to share your thoughts, please do william.harman at ljfa.ie. We'd more, uh, be more than happy to hear your thoughts on, on the various webinars. And if we can support you anyway, no problem at all. So the outcome of tonight's webinar, during this webinar, we just want you to just, just to sit back and to think and reflect about the importance of mind yourself as a coach. And I suppose I would ask the question is, how often do we actually think about this topic? I'm a coach myself. I can relate to this topic very much so through my experiences as a coach over the last number of years. So, um, you know, hopefully you can, you can get time to think and reflect on this topic. And then hopefully we can share and discuss just coping strategies that will assist us with dealing with the everyday coaching issues that we encounter. And we all do encounter those coaching issues. So how do we, I suppose, cope with them? And I always learn, through experience, you always learn through experience. So um, hopefully we can share those experiences throughout the evening. But before we start, give a look at these uh, quotes from an elite coach. Uh, this coach actually was John Kiley, uh, did a very good article uh, uh, in relation to his experiences after the All-Ireland uh, hurling semi-final against Cork. He actually went to extra time the year they won the All-Ireland in, in 2018. And very interesting, very open he was in terms of his experience after that and the tension that he had following that game. Um, and Gerard, look, it, 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 it's, it's, it's interesting. Like he said, he couldn't sleep. You know, he had such a rush of an adrenaline after the game. He couldn't get it out of his system, he was saying. He said he had to step away for, for a while uh, until he was able to give that, you know, that time to the group again. Um, and he had his support team to step in. He had a great support team. He had Caroline Curran current involved as well as a performance coach and great support and, and I think that support stepped in but it's very interesting you know a high profile coach and experiencing these experiences or these feelings after such a high profile game Garoda have you any thoughts on it? Yes it's very interesting and I think it depends on how much you want to listen to yourself as a coach or your body your mind because sometimes we kind of uh, distract ourselves from certain things. Some people are very good at separating themselves from those situations, but others can be overcome by that adrenaline. And then that can, that can uh, haze your vision, uh, your thinking before or after a game, all of those things. So it's how you can recognize it. And then personally, because everyone is different, how you manage or deal with it. And you're probably all looking here going, she's will, you know, come on, it's the highest level, you know, in front of Cork Park, 82,000 people, pressure's huge, very high. Jeez, you know, that's, that's a you know, I'm, I'm a club coach, you know what I mean? I, I could be dealing with the 12s or the 14s or the 16s. It, it, it shouldn't really apply to me. But let's look at the next slide. And, you know, this club coach, this, the, 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 the feedback I got from, from this club, club coach probably initiate this, 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 this topic. Because it's very interesting what this club coach came back with. He was saying, you know, that he's involved in coaching since 1987. Um, he puts on weight because, you know, he's had extra meals, you know, during, uh, if he's had a, had a training or a game that night. 
And it's a double whammy because he's got so much going on with work and training that he can't get his own time for his own exercise. He's even saying, you know, he gets skin abrasions uh, that need to be burned off as a result of negligence on his part from rushing from work to the outdoors without adequate skin cover, which is very, very interesting, very honest from him. And then, you know, at times he says, he gives, he's be, I've been given out to his home because I'm in a bad mood due to coaching issues or match results that he may be, or may be preoccupied on the phone. And these are comments coming from an LGP, a ladies football club coach. Um, and Gerald, it's, it's very interesting really that, you know, it, it kind of, it doesn't matter what level you're at in terms of coaching, you know, you could experience these at any time. And please, in the chat function, guys, would you relate to this sort of uh, feedback? Would you have experienced these sort of, um, you know, kind of, uh, I suppose, emotions uh, or situations as a coach? Please, in the ch chat function, please share. But, Carol, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think the two scenarios are very interesting because one is a psychological more and the other one is like physical impact that they yes. may have had. And it's both can occur. So we need to be aware that both can happen. I definitely know personally, I've sat on the sideline of games. I've worn a hat on the sideline and my head has been cooking for about an hour and a half in a summer heat that we may have not have predicted. And then it won't be until I'm at home or later on that evening or even the next day I wake up and I'll have a migraine and I'll have a pain in my head. And it's, I think we sacrifice in those moments because we feel our duty is there for the team, but we also need to consider the long-term, am I going to be fit and healthy to do training the following week? I could be dehydrated the next day or after a game from telling our players or girls, drink your water, be, be hydrated. It's, you're passing on the um, importance and the responsibility, it's all on you. You're telling and informing, you're being there for everyone else except yourself. And, and it's, it's a very good point. turn that around. Yeah, and that's a very good point. You know, our duty is to care, to support, to uh, develop, you know, players. And sometimes we're so engrossed in that, you know, that we forget about ourselves. And, and guys, you know, I have no problem admitting as a coach, I've experienced emotional kind of you know responses and physical responses due to my you know i'm so engrossed in what i do i remember after one major final when i was with a team when the referee blew the whistle i just broke down in terms of it all seemed to just release for me in that moment and there are times where i feel physically tired because i'm so concentrated on what i'm trying to achieve but i suppose the point we're trying to make here is that irrespective of whether you're an elite coach or a club coach you could too can experience these. So it's very important, as you said, to acknowledge and recognize these symptoms and to be aware of them. And Robert, very good point you made in, in the chat function. And we'll be coming to that shortly as well, that point you make regarding, you know, uh, how do we cope with that? And also those, those actually, I suppose, emotions as well and, and those thought processes. And Frank, on the 14 manager of the county, feel very guilty time when the amount of time preoccupied with all things managing and coaching. Four children on my own, big sacrifice around. And we're going to come to that as well, Frank. So we will shortly. So uh, good point. As you said, guys, and everybody listening in tonight and, and tomorrow, and we're listening back to this podcast or this uh, webinar, it can affect you in many ways. As outlined by that club coach, it affected him because he couldn't get time to exercise properly. John Kiley couldn't, couldn't sleep, you know? Because of the workload on that club coach, you know, he forgot to apply protective factor on his skin against the sun. You know, he also mentioned about the mood. Is, you know, going home in bad form, whether it be after a bad performance or maybe a bad decision he made in the game and having, you know, affecting, you know, his uh, relationship with his family or a family member when he comes home. Um, your diet, obviously, does, of course, because, you know, you're rushing from one to the next. You're not getting time to eat properly, which is key. You know, so it's, it's kind of a, you know, a vicious circle really into Garrod in terms of, you know, one will affect the other. And we'll go into a bit more detail in a minute. If you don't, I suppose, manage it properly, uh, is, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, and it's these, as you can see in front of you, are uh, the ingredients to a happy, healthy lifestyle. So if you're compromising any of these, then you're compromising a happy, healthy lifestyle for yourself. 
So it's good to be able to recognize if some of these are off kilter, what do you need to do then to maybe rectify that sooner rather than later? And at the end of the day, going back to the point, you know, in the previous webinar we about line, our role is to look after our players, to develop our players, to support our players. But if you're not the best version of you, I don't know, can you achieve that? If that makes sense to everybody. You need to be the best version of you. Uh, and, and the only way you can, you can achieve that is that if you're in a, you know, your mind and your body is in the appropriate, I suppose, um, way to be able to deal with all these issues that may come across. So it's very important. You need to be the best you can be. Uh, and hopefully we'll, go, we'll, go, we'll touch on a few other things as we go along. So the key learning from, from part one of tonight is, as I said, you know, many times our responsibility to look after our players, but not just you, everybody's a role to play in that. And we'll touch that in terms of who is that everybody, you know, who is the people that can support you in trying to achieve what you're trying to achieve with your players. But very importantly, and more importantly is, lifestyle of a coach, regardless of level, can be stressful and can be unhealthy, as you outlined, Darold, can be unhealthy if it's not managed properly. And I have no problem saying, I've experienced this. I've experienced this involved with an adult team, but I've also experienced this involved with an underage team. And hopefully we can share our experiences shortly. Regardless of Again, guys, if you have any thoughts, do you agree or disagree with what we're saying, please in the chat function share it. Okay, so what are the factors to be mindful of? Do you here tonight, or when you're looking back at the webinar, ever feel this kind of, you know, being, being overstretched? You know, we're, we're, we want to look after our players and do the best for our players. So therefore, do you know what we feel we need to be doing everything, you know? And there's also a feeling, I don't know, Garrod, I always get this kind of feeling that it's expected of me to be able to manage all these roles, you know, in order to try and help our players be the best they can be. Yeah. And, and I, I think that's something that we need to recognize. And sometimes we put that, unfortunately, on ourselves. If there are no or little or less expectations within a certain team or a group, and we might put that on ourselves, put it more responsibly on ourselves than is healthy. And that could be overstretched in terms of taking multiple teams. We can't say no. Okay, we need help. Okay, well, I, I'll help you out. And now we're involved with multiple teams. And now we're feeling, oh, feeling that, you know, and I speak about it every time, that we have to be there all the time, every time. That feeling of overstretched because, you know what, we're, so I would say it's very important just to recognize that. Catering for the injured player, you're probably saying, William, what do you mean? How can this be something to be mindful of? When a player gets injured, okay, you're always thinking straight away is, well, oh my God, how is she, number one? How is she? I hope she's okay. Well, what can we do to support her? What do I need to do to help her to get back on the field to play? So I need to go and source that support for her. I'm also thinking about, oh my God, what is this going to do to our team? When will she be back? You know, how it's going to affect our team dynamics. Things like this. You're going to follow up, constantly ring in and text and see how things, how are you going, following up with the physio, maybe. You're finding out, okay, well, does she need help with the financial help in terms of is the injury fund? Is that going to cover it or is our private insurance or how are we going to support that player? So now you're not only, as I said, we're there to support and care for our players, you're thinking about these constantly about. What is it you should be doing to support this player in order to get her back to, to, the, to the field of play? So I don't know, Gary, I think that's interesting in terms of that's another dynamic that we probably feel that, you know what, we've got to be a part of that to make sure that player is supported. Yeah, and sometimes we can share the burden that's on the player at that time. So if that player is going through anxiety or going through any stress or yes. trying to get back on time, you might be emotionally attached to that player. So you could be exhausting yourself anyway on top of all of the other duties that you are required to do. Yeah, I think that's very important. Like, you know, because, you know, you have to probably connect with that player. You know, you mean you have to make them feel comfortable. You have to make sure that they're coming back at the right time. You're managing all these things. So I just think that's, that's and it might be more than one player. You could four or five players out. What if you have a big game coming up? Oh my God, you're down three or four players. What are you going to do? But all these thoughts are going through your mind. 
um, and how do you deal with them? Always feel it being available. Do anybody in the group always feel like that? That you're always accessible. You always, you know, the players always feel they can make contact with you at any time. I don't know, you could be in a cinema. You know, you might go away just to get away from things. You know, and then you get a text going, hi, Will, can't make the game tomorrow. Sorry about that. You're going, oh my God, tomorrow's a big game. What? And straight away, forget about the video, forget about the cinema or whatever you're doing. You're now engaged in that conversation. Well, why? What's wrong? What happened? Is there anything I can do for you? Now, straight away, need, need, now you need to let your, your, um, your, your fellow coaches know. Oh my God, Mary and Sheen are missing tomorrow because of this. What are we going to do? So now all of a sudden, you know, your, 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 your mind is switched from being relaxed to being engaged in a, con uh, in a conversation that you probably thought you wouldn't be. It impinges in your evenings. You know, okay, you're there, you want to do work at home or wherever it may be. And then all of a sudden, bing, or you're going to miss call. Things like that, guys, if you probably minimize our, our ability to switch off. I think that's, that's a big challenge for a lot of coaches to be able to switch off from probably their coaching team because they're always thinking about and, and then they get a sudden text and it just changes the dynamic of the day. Has anybody here been concentrated and being very relaxed and then all of a sudden one text just changes the whole dynamic of the day? I don't know what you're thinking of that, Carol. Yeah, you definitely, it's a very dangerous thing and creating that separation is so important because you need to be able to rest your mind from certain things. And there's nothing wrong with having a window like you would have office hours at work a window of when you are available to be contacted on certain things. So you know during this time in the evening or the afternoon, uh, players understand they can contact you. But after that, then they mightn't be able to get a reply from you because you are doing whatever in your own social, uh, personal life. So it creates a little bit of separation. And you can then, knowing that, you can maybe turn off the phone for those few hours because no one will expect to get through to you and you'll create that separation. But separation from that has, is healthy because sometimes it can overcome your life and become overwhelming. Yeah, I think Robert makes a good point. It is important, yeah, 100% to connect with your players. You don't ignore your players, but I think there's a time when you have to probably give yourself your time too. You know, you need to have your time and, you know, maybe turning off that phone for those two hours when you're in the cinema. Okay, come out. And when you might get all the texts in, but at least for two hours, you're able to relax your mind and then deal with the scenario when you come out afterwards, rather than during the time when you want to get your relaxing time, it's very different. We're just raising things to be mindful of, really. Yeah. Um, and, and very good point, Robert. We're going to come to that in a minute. We'll come to the strategies in a minute in terms of how we overcome these. We're just kind of going through a few things that, you know, that we encounter as coaches. That feeling of, you know, you have to be there every time, at everything at every time. You know what? The show can't go on without you. You have to be there. You know, you have to be at every session. You know, if there's a course on, you're going to be there. If there's a, a talk on the club, you're going to be there. You know, this feeling that we have to be there all the time. And I don't know, that, does that ring true that we have to be there all the time? Is that ourselves as coaches putting our pressure on ourselves? Or, you know, so it's very important that we're, we recognize that that's something to be mindful of in terms of maybe we don't have to be there at, at every time, at, at all the time. But there is a kind of feeling and knows as us coaches that, well, the show won't go on unless I'm not there. I'm there. And I just think sometimes there's that feeling that can bring a bit of attention, a bit of anxiety in what we're doing. And then there's preparing for the big game and all that comes with that in terms of, oh my God, where are we playing? What's the opposition? What tactics are they doing? How are we going to play? What team will we play? What scenarios do we think about? What if someone gets sent off? What substitution are we going to make? You know, what's the venue like? How are we going to get the bus? Who's going to get the food? Who's going to have the water? <laughs> the point I'm making is there's so much involved that we can engross ourselves in terms of all this and get, you know, get really consumed by it. And um, I think, Carol, these are just, we're not going to go through everything, but I think these are things that are common across the board from a coach's perspective in terms of what they encounter, I, I suppose, when, when things get a bit hectic. I think that final one comes down to really to delegation. All of those different aspects. What can, what's the one thing we can ask someone else to do or have it be their responsibility on a match day so it's less for us as a team or management to worry about so we can focus more on the job at hand. Yeah. 
And I know another one I don't have, what if we lose a game? You're straight away thinking, what subscribe made? I, and think about this. You're probably saying, William, this is probably high. I was over, you know, if you're over underage teams, you all know yourselves here, guys, you know, and you, you promised the players you're going to give them game time. But, you know, you played a game, you got consumed in the game, and all of a sudden, two players didn't get game time. You're going home thinking, why didn't I give that player game time? What are they thinking now? Will they come back training next week? I wonder what their parents are thinking. Oh, so it's amazing even when you lose even a big game. Should I have done this? What could I have done better? So all these thoughts and processes are putting untold pressure on us that we don't even realize on it. So it's how do we manage all this uh, to probably, I suppose, cope with these various tensions and strategies that are our emotions that come across us. So to finish off what we're going to do, we will go through a few strategies, but please, whether you agree or disagree, please share your thoughts. So what can we do to assist us cope with all these things uh, that we come across as coaches? And the first thing I would say and put out there is that supportive environment. Now, we did a webinar on how to create a positive coaching environment recently. Give a look at that, you know, in terms of the environment that supports you. So the, I do believe the club that you're involved with has a role to play in assisting you to be the best you can be and probably assist you with all the various roles and, and guide you and support you. So are the club clear on their values and their philosophy? So do you know what you're getting yourself into? Because if you get yourself, you know, what I'm saying about it is that, are you going to get involved and then ask, okay, you're over the under 13s, but you know what? You're on your own. Or do you know what? You're just with another coach and you're dealing with 35 players or 30 players. What are their policies and procedures like? Okay, so if I'm getting involved, you need to be clarity around, well, what support and guidance am I going to get to help me to be the best I can be? So just things to be considered about in terms of, okay, well, if I'm getting involved with a team, well, who's going to support me? Because I've 35 players to deal with. And go back to the point you made, Robert, and also Frank. Okay, we need support and help. Go back to John Kiley. Without the support he had in his backroom team, he would not have been able to step away and come back when he was ready. So it's very important that the club should give you the support and they have the policies and procedures in place, support you in any scenario that may be arise throughout the year. So you have something to fall back on. You know you can you know, get support from someone if you need that help. And I don't know, I think that's important, Gerard. I think something we forget about that, that we need to probably look at the environment we're getting ourselves into and what is there to support us that maybe, for example, the manager, if we have an issue with parents, if we have an issue with selection of players, okay, well, how, how are we going to deal with that? I think, Gerard, that's important as well to have that, that macro, shall I say, support uh, around us. And, and I think there to. Yeah, that comes in with, it aligns with your goals as a coach, with your personality as a person. And does it does that club you're involved with do, is their philosophy reflect what you are looking to achieve? And when they align, then it makes a much happier, much more supportive environment for you to work in. So obviously, without that, then it could cause you more stress, more uh, and more adverse effects then on you, and more worries for you as a coach or coaching that team. John Daly, thanks, John. And probably this, the point I'm making here now probably answers your question, John. So this is what I'm saying. So John, if you get involved and you have two or three coaches with you, okay, and maybe one or two of your coaches are probably being, have inappropriate behavior on the sideline, which is causing you stress because you want to be calm. You want to make sure your players are calm. But it goes back to the club and the expected behavior of our coaches. So the club are outlining, it's the role of the club to outline to their coaches what is the expected behavior of your coaches. And in my opinion, John, you as coaches can deal with that issue, but also the club are there to support you that if coaches are stepping out of, their, out, of, out, of, out of line in terms of their coaching behaviours, then the club are there to support you in that. that you don't feel isolated, that you're the one that's left to be given all the feedback. But that's just where I think, that's, that's the point I'm making, John, in terms of very important, it's very important that the support structures, the policies and procedures are there to deal with scenarios like that. And I've come across that myself, John, in terms of, there are probably one or two coaches going, geez, let's calm down. You know, we want to, so therefore you have to nip it in the bud, you have to deal with, this is what the club expects of us, this is how we need to behave on the sideline, okay, and we'll deal with it and, and make sure that it doesn't cause tension or unnecessary tension down the road. But maybe the next one as well could help, that feeling you're not alone and where you support your peer coaches, where they will challenge you and support you. So I always say, get cool people around you. 
Get good people around you that you trust that will also challenge you in a respectful way. And I would say, have those regular coaching chats. So on a regular basis, take yourself out of the everyday training and the, all the games and sit down, even as a, a man, a coaching group and say, guys, how are we getting on as a group? What are we doing well? Okay. What are the coaching issues we're encountering? Have we an issue with each other? What are those issues? Okay, come on. Let's have a chat about it. Let's deal with it. Let's nip it in the bud. And let's also kind of promote this keep learning. What I mean by that, that could be the club coaches. So all the club coaches come together and have discussions around any issues and, and considerations that you're having with your various teams. So the point I'm making here is that the more you talk with your fellow coaches, your coaching group, and the fellow coaches in your club, it's giving you support and guidance that you're not on your own here. That you know what? You're probably experiencing the same concerns and issues as your fellow coaches, and maybe they've done something to come across that to help you with maybe uh, dealing with that issue. And then you get a sense of belonging that, you know what? I'm part of something bigger here. I think that's very important, girl. That's right. I noticed from my own coaching, when I've been involved with the club and their support and guidance to deal with any issues I may come across, but there's clarity around how we deal with that. And then the support of my fellow coaches and the coaching group in the club have a key role in helping me, I suppose, do the best job possible. Uh, John, what's your thoughts on that, Carol? Yeah, I definitely think in relation to John's point uh, that having a club coaching philosophy, uh, having those guidelines there, supports you so you don't need to set single yourself out step out make a point against other coaches if they're not up to standard it is the club that is doing that on your behalf and then the club coaching guidelines you're just using that as a reference and then that means these individual incidences that may occur within a coaching group don't fall back on one individual it is a club who've already agreed that this is what we want to our coaches to be or how we want our coaches to act so it's not a personal thing you're not putting the stress of the situation back on yourself or the responsibility you're just referring to them to what's already there in relation to john's and then also in having that interaction with other club coaches your own coaching team makes you you're not isolating yourself yes. you are there you're there as part of a group and then you feel stronger going forward together instead of on your own. And what happens when you're on your own as a coach and you're thinking because the coaches are such deep thinkers. You're thinking about the game, preparing for the game, learning from the last game. What are we going to do at our next training session? If, some, if we're on our own, then we might presume certain things. Presume this coach doesn't is saying this. Presume this parent might be saying this. And it can go down a very negative rabbit hole. And then it's not good we're putting extra pressures upon ourselves. So it's lovely to have that interaction, that constant sharing of ideas, of experiences with, between you and your coaching team. And it keeps very healthy then going forward. Yeah. Very healthy, very positive coaching environment. Yeah, that, that, the open coaching, that open coach. Keep the conversation, keep the coaching conversations open. And I would say there, uh, guys, Go on to our webinar, creating a positive coaching environment goes into more detail in that aspect. Social support. So and what we mean here by family and friends, and I think this is very important. The word I would use here is understand, that your family and friends understand that, you know what, there's times when you're going to be away from the house because you're at a game or training. And I always believe the support of your family and friends are very important because they're the ones who, do you know what, they, they'll never judge you. They never judge if you lose a game, you know, and you come home, you know, they're not going to judge you for the person or it's not, you know, in terms of the result or whatever happened, they'll support you. And they know, you know, okay, they, they'll give you a nice, you know, they might you know, give you kind of a, a helping hand or, a, you know, and, and ask you questions and make you feel good about yourself again and, and probably remind you of why you're doing what you're doing. So I think your family and friends understanding, you know, the, the commitment that you're putting into the, to the training of teams and coaching teams is very, very important. Because it creates that safe haven as well when you come home. And the critical friend, I have this always in a mentor. I always have a critical friend or mentor that I'll always pick up the phone to every now and then and just ask for advice. I might say to him, will you come along and just watch the game from the stand? I'd love to get your feedback on, well, what, how do you think I did as a coach today? And how do you think I can improve? You know? 
I think that's vitally important to get a different perspective. Having that person you can trust to give you real constructive and honest feedback. Um, but I think that's very important to that support as well, Gerald. You know, that you're, you know, you're coming home, you know, your, your, your family and friends know you've just, you're, you're, they know when you're disappointed. They know when you're down. They're not going to jump. I know for a fact when I come home and I lose a game, I might just need a half an hour just to, just to unwind, just to time to myself, and then I'm, I'm okay after that. So I just think it's important that your family and friends recognize that tag the road. Um, and that critical friend is very important as well. Yeah, and a critical friend and a mentor, it's brilliant. Of course, as coaches, we always want to learn from past experiences, build upon it. So we're constantly learning. Our team is evolving. We're evolving as coaches. But just be wary. Some people are at a certain stage that they are able to do that, bring someone in without seeing it as being criticism or being criticized or... Um, an attack on how they do certain things. So they might see, so make sure you're in the right, correct place before you, before you ask someone in to give you that feedback as well. So That's you're right. willing to accept and take on that feedback in the correct way. Yeah. Delegate, and I think very good point you made Robert earlier on in terms of delegate and trust your coaching group. I had no problem saying a few years ago, I had a small group and I didn't delegate enough. I, I, I had, felt I had to do everything. I felt like going back to the earlier point, that I had to be the person determining when we train or what warm-up we do and what drills we do and what activities we do. I was the person having to probably come up with a schedule for the, the match day schedule. I felt I was the person that needed to get the bibs, the water, the, to make sure that the, you know, the, the, the gear was on the, on the bus. I, and you know what? I, and go back to the point that when that final whistle blew in that game, all the emotion drained from me because it, just, I, it was over. The game, it's all over. We finished, we've lost the final, it's over. The whole emotion just drained from me. I didn't delegate enough in terms of trust my coaching group to ensure that, you know what, will you take the session tonight? You know what, I need to take a step back here for a week. Is that okay? Do you know what, I, I trust you guys. Will you just take the session tonight and I'll see you at the game on Saturday? Or, you know, will you look after the injured players? So your job is any player to get injured, will you just look after them, make sure they're looked after, that they're, you know, they fill out the various forms? Your job is to make sure all the gears, you know, the, the water bottles, the, the, the footballs, the cones. And you know, your job is whenever we're, we're traveling for a game, we need to start out logistics. That's your job. That's what I've done better at in the last number of years. As a result of my experience I had a number of years ago, whereby I, I felt I could do everything. I felt I could be everywhere. And you know what? When the final whistle blew, my emotion is when I realized, hold on a second, this is not healthy at all. This is not healthy at all. And I learned from my experience that I didn't dedicate enough. I didn't give the ownership and responsibility to my fellow, my fellow assistants and coaches. So therefore, I learned big on that. And you know what is a result of all that? I'm now enjoying coaching again, really enjoying it because I've got great people around me. And only for that, I wouldn't have enjoyed. If I kept going to where I was going, I would not be coaching today. And I just think that's very important to highlight that, Gerard. Uh, and it's okay to say I need help. I have no problem telling my coaching group, guys, I need to step back. You know, I was up the country today. Look, I'm not sure in the headspace for it. Is it okay if we take the session tonight? And, and give the people that responsibility and ownership and, and empowerment. Garoud, what's your thoughts on that? Is that I, that I think it's interesting, and I totally agree with everything you've just said. I, but when you look at it then from your coaching group's perspective, the more you take on as a head coach or a manager of a team, the less opportunities your members of your coaching group have to show what they can do, the less responsibility they have to continue to grow within the coaching environment. So if you're doing everything, they're just watching you, but they're not learning the ins and outs of whatever, of everything, unless you delegate them a certain task or a particular role and allow them then to flourish within those roles. So I think for me, it's going to benefit you, of course, that you're less running around, less things to do. You will still have to consider all the things that those people might have to do within their roles, but they will be doing them. They will be performing them for you and they will become, they'll feel more important as a part of your coaching team. They'll feel they'll be able to relate back, talk to you more. There'll be more communication between each of you. So if something were to happen, you were sick or you were unavailable for a certain evening, that they can just step up and assume those roles and there's no big gap that they need to bridge. 
I think it's very good. And actually, uh, if you are existing, Joe, go back to the previous point about the members who had those regular chats. We did a review of our, our coaching group got together and we had a review. And the feedback was, William, you're not dedicated enough. No, you need to dedicate more. You need to use us more. That was the part of the feedback. Well, excellent. Thank you very much. And I'll do that. And as a result, you know, I'm now enjoying it a lot better. So, you know, you've got to be open to that, that constructive feedback as well, you know, that criticism and, and, and utilize it because they want the best for you as well. And I think that's very important. Change the scenery, training, route of trip. You're probably going, geez, what do you mean by that? You know, when I'm coaching teams, I might change the scenery every now and then just to get a different perspective, you know, just to keep the motivation high, to have a bit of fun about it. We might go to a, a, a venue that's, you know, the way out in the open in, in the middle of nowhere and the players are coming, they're laughing and joking, go, what, what do you bring us out here for? And you're having a laugh and joke about it. You know, it's just to change the scenery every now and then. It's okay to recognize what's around you, you know? Maybe the route to training. I might go a different route every now and then. I'd say, actually, I go home this way now, tonight. Or no, I might go this way and just observe what's around me. And just, again, it's just for myself to ensure I'm in the right headspace that when I do go into the group or I might go home a different way so that when I go home, that half, remember I spoke about a 15 minutes or half an hour? I might go home a different way to get my headspace right so that when I come into the house, I'm in good form and the game is put behind me and I focus on my family. So it's very important that we recognize that in terms of strategies. So what I normally do is if I've lost a game and I have stuff in my head, I might go the long way home. So when I get home, I have it all taught through my mind and I can just sit back and relax uh, for, that, for, that, for that evening. I just think that's something that probably might be something for you to think about because if you go straight home and you're an adult, you're thinking about the game and someone says something to you at home and you just snap, you just, you just, you just respond in a bad form, in a bad way, you'll regret that. So I always say, you know, take that extra time if you need it. Um, yeah, I, I don't know, before we go to the last slide, what's your thoughts on, on, on that one? You know? Yeah, no, just quite simply, it's the exact same relating back to separation yeah, and separating separation. those things. And, and yeah, and not bringing it home. You know what I mean? Your family and your friends recognize when you go home, you're disappointed. So therefore, they'll give you the time or they'll, they'll ask the right questions and they'll say the right words with the right time. But if you go home in, in, in bad form because of what may have happened previously, then that's where you're more highly likely to probably snap or, or probably just say something you don't want to say. Okay, so it's very important to be mindful of that. So what else, guys? Sleep. And this is interesting. You know yourself when you're preparing for a big game or, you know, someone may have got injured in training that night or, you know, something happened in the game or, you know, something was said, you know, it's in your mind. And I always notice when, I, when we train, you know, we have a game at night, my mind, I'm, I'm, I'm high in adrenaline in terms of, geez, you know, my mind is still racing. I find it very difficult to sleep. So it's very important that we, we get good sleep in. And what I try and do is get the phone out of the room. No phone in the room. So in order to make sure I sleep well, I get the phone out of the room because I can guarantee you maybe my members of my management team or players are texting or maybe I'm looking at a report of a game or whatever it may be. And my mind won't be able to settle and relax. So I always try and get rid of the phone at least an hour before, before I go to bed. So I, my mind can just relax. I go to bed and I make sure I don't bring the phone up to the room with me. So just to ensure that I get that good night's sleep. Uh, I think that's important because if you don't get a good night's sleep, it's going to affect your diet. Because now you're going to be eating irregularly. You know, you're going to eat irregularly. You know, if you don't eat well, you might eat before you go to bed, which is too late at night. You might be eating the wrong foods. So it all interconnects. I remember that the coach earlier on said that because of all, you know, he wasn't sleeping well, or maybe his diet wasn't what it should be, it, he wasn't able to exercise. So he wasn't getting an opportunity to, to reflect and take time out. So I have a rule in my house for myself as a coach that once a day, I'm going to bring the dog for a walk I leave the phone at home and I just, I don't think about nothing else. I don't even think about football or nothing. I just go for a walk and I just enjoy the walk. If I meet someone, I say hello to them and I have a chat. I just enjoy that moment. So it's very important that we, I suppose, we, we make sure we sleep well. Because if you sleep well, you eat well. Okay? If you exercise well, you eat well. And you sleep well. So they're all so interlinked that we can't uh, underestimate that. And on our LGFA YouTube channel, under, you know, we've webinars specific on these topics in more detail as well. Give a look at them. Um, and before the last thing I'm saying is make a list. What is controllable and what's uncontrollable? Recognize, go back to John Kaisman, recognize what are these key factors that are, I suppose, increasing your intention 
or your emotions, okay? Write down beside them what's controllable, what's not controllable. Get rid of the uncontrollable things, okay? That you can't do nothing about and just recognize that. And I think that will help you in terms of managing your emotions. And, and I suppose you're just you're being at probably more, I suppose, the coach you want to be. Garod, what's your thoughts on that uh, uh, slide there? Yeah, I think um, I think we've all learned it anyway over the last two years in relation to a pandemic and COVID. And what was the first thing you saw once lockdown occurred? Everyone was out walking. We realized how important it was. And that's one very good thing. Exercise, fresh air, getting out is the simplest form going for a walk. But I think it's nearly still one of the most effective ways of separating yourself from your thoughts, from different pressures in different forms of life. So um, I still think, I think going out fresh air, taking a walk, separating yourself, especially from the noise, the news, whatever reports, match reports, whatever they may be, I think that's so important. And then in relation to controllable versus uncontrollable, I always say, be pragmatic. So what pragmatic means, realize what you can do. What is realistic? What can you achieve? A lot of the time our thoughts go into, okay, what could be possible? What might be possible if we did a certain thing or we go there? But it's not right there in front of you. So realize what you can do, what is in front of you, what you can control, and then less worry less than about what you can't uh, control. And I give an example of that, everyone. I give an example, you know, you know, the report on games. Another person got your game and given a report and their opinion on how they saw the game played. And maybe question your decision making. So what I do, I don't read reports. I don't get papers in. I don't bother with it because it's something I can't control. But if I did read the report, it would probably annoy me. <laughs> if that makes sense, do you know what I mean? So I'm getting annoyed because someone else had an opinion about something. No, I'm not. Okay, well, I, I, I'll remove that and I just won't read reports. And I just believe in my own thought process and I trust the people around me and the opinions of the people around me are more important. My critical friend and my coaching group and my players. They're, that's, that's the key. That's very important. The, that's, that's the circle of trust. Every other's opinion doesn't really matter. Again, I'm recognizing that. So therefore, I'm, I'm managing that as well. I hope, guys, you know, and I think this is, this is, this is, this is a very important point that John Kiley, that, that's, you know, that uh, report he did or that, that article he did in terms of after that 2018 all Ireland final. But he said, being able to recognize the opportunities where we can help others within the group and maybe where others need help, others need help is important. So I think recognizing that, that, you know what, I need to take a step back here. Or you know what, my fellow coaches need to take a break and we'll support them. At the end of the day, we all need a little help from time to time. And I'm no different to others. And I thought that was very important. You know, that was a very powerful statement by John in terms of he recognizes, hold on a second, not everybody's immune from this. We all experience this. As I say, guys, I even call about the coaching adult teams and also coaching underage teams, which brings their own pressures. But recognizing, okay, okay, when is time you need support and help or advice, recognizing that and then dealing with that and, and taking the right actions is very important. Uh, and those and trusting the people around you and supporting the people around you. I thought, Garo, I, I thought that really summed it up, really. You know. Yeah, absolutely. And um, it's just seeing, always revisit as well why you're doing what you're doing. Oh, why, exactly. And then why are you doing it? If you're doing it for the right reasons then any of that noise that you might hear or any of the pressures that you put upon yourself in, on top of what you're already doing, then you can let go of some of those when you realize why you're there and what you're doing is in line with what you should be doing. Exactly. Okay, you're not there to harm anyone. You're not there to ruin players' careers. You're not there. <laughs> so why would you take all that negative pressure that you might perceive other people feel about you or your approach to, like, for example, if Will did have a poor game, it's not as if any criticism in a paper would justify saying, oh, Will didn't win, he didn't do this, he mustn't care about that team. He mustn't be, do uh, he must be doing it to lose. He must be doing all these other things, all the wrong things on purpose. 
all that is noise. And once you separate yourself from that and realize how ridiculous some of those opinions out there are, then you can really be maintain that positive step forward and yeah. don't have to carry that luggage with you psychologically. And also, going back to my original point about the, the support from the club, that okay, that they understand the role you play, they're going to support and guide you in that, and that you know, you're not going to be judged on the results, you're going to be judged on, okay, are we improving, developing our players? And are they all coming back next year? And at the end of the year, are they going to be all there again next year? So it's very important that that, that cycle, that environment around you, you have the right people around you and the right support and guidance, John. Very good point there, John. And um, I always say, you know, positive and, and, and I suppose not so positive feedback, there's always stuff in it. So listen to all opinions at, at times, John. Um, you never know there might be something in it. Um, but I, I won't go into more detail on that one. Uh, so thank you very much for, for your chat there. Yeah, but it's 100%, guys. Uh, the people closer to you will always give you the, 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 the right feedback, I always say. You know, they'll, they'll give you the, the feedback because they know you want to be the best you can be. So then they'll, they'll, they'll always give you the, the good feedback. So that's basically it for tonight. And I just said, we just wanted to finish the series with this, with this, with this uh, webinar, because sometimes we're so caught up in the everyday life of coaching and, you know, games that we don't take time to probably reflect on, well, how is it affecting us? And is it affecting me being the best version of me? So I can help and support and develop and choose uh, our players. I think sometimes I have no problem saying, I got to a point where I'm saying, that's not, no, no, no. That's not, that's not healthy. You know, that's not healthy, Will. You need to change how you conduct yourself as a coach or how you, you, you manage yourself as a coach uh, in terms of how do you get your support group around you, get the right people around you, empowering and delegating people to support and also the support of the club and all, how all these factors help you to start enjoying coaching again. And that's the key to it. How do you ensure that you're enjoying what you're doing? Uh, and so therefore, all we're saying tonight is just, can you recognize and acknowledge it and then take the right action to make sure you can achieve that? So on the chat function, please, please let us know what did you take from tonight? What was the one thing you took from tonight? We really appreciate that. And Gerard, before I go, um, what's what, what would be the one piece of advice you give people? Or what was your learning from tonight? I think uh, before you do anything, just take, give yourself a moment, give yourself a time. So if you have any doubt or you feel like you're running yourself uh, too much, you're wearing out or you're having a psych uh, psychologically, you might be wrecked or tired, just give yourself some time. Take a deep breath, think about it, okay? What do I need to do now? to kind of rectify this or where do I need to give myself some more time so I can continue to serve and to do the uh, act in the role that I'm currently in yeah. to the best of my ability. So always, first of all, when you have any doubt about if you're feeling down, run down physically or psychologically, always give yourself that time, that moment, five minutes, 10 minutes and reflect on how you are feeling and then what you might need to do for yourself to put yourself in that better position. Yeah, so hopefully, guys, you know, it's that reflection, that importance of, I suppose, reflecting, well, what did I do well today in terms of how I managed myself, you know, or how you're managing yourself, guys. Even now, as I said earlier on, if you can go away now and sit down and even just ask yourself the question, how am I currently you know, going about my business? Is there anything I can do to help me to enjoy what I do even more and to achieve what I'm trying to achieve in terms of supporting and developing our players. On that note, I'd like to say thank you very much, Garold, for this evening. I hope you as coaches enjoyed the webinar series in total, the, the LJFA Spring Series, Coach Education Series. This is the last webinar of that series. All our webinars are on our LJFA YouTube channel. Please give a look at them. And as always, if you have any feedback or thoughts, please just email us on william.harman at ljfa.ie we more than uh, more than uh, welcome all your feedback but on that note we want you to wish you very best luck in your coaching over the coming weeks and hopefully we might see you around the place uh, uh, you never know at uh, uh, some of the games over the summer so on that note thank you very much for your time thank you Garrod and uh, enjoy your evening